Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Tales from the Vulgar Unicorn, book number two in the Thieves' World series. I've got two different versions of the book here. We're going to mention that and talk about that. The um, Thieves' World series, edited by Robert Asprin. This book came out in 1980. Book number one, which was just in a title, Thieves' World, came out in 1979. Let's talk about the covers first, and then we'll talk about the idea of Thieves' World, and then we'll talk about this book specifically. Now, and we'll also talk about some of the inspirations Thieves' World gave me for my own fantasy series. Um... Because I read these books when I was a teenager, really young. One of the first fantasy series I ever got into. Um, the covers, though. This is the original cover. Now, Walter Valez did the original artwork on the first six Thieves' World novels. That's a great cover. We've got our, our thief, our minstrel, our magician... And it looks like they're inside the Vulgar Unicorn, which was the saloon that they all, all the thieves hung out in. And then, um, and then Gary Rodell did uh, a remake of all the covers. He did the rest of the uh, 12 book series. And he, we've got this great painting that he did here. And he did the rest of them. So let's go over here. And we'll look at the original. These are the original Walter Velez Thieves World covers right there. And then um, Gary Rodell did the, um, I've got all the Thieves' World with the Gary Rodell covers here also. And he did a great job with these, each one of these. And then there was a lot of Thieves' World standalone novels, which I've got all the standalone Thieves' World novels. And then I've got the Thieves' World role-playing game down here with the great Walter Velez painting on the front of this. What is Thieves' World, you might be asking? What is Thieves' World? Well, it was, a, it was probably the most popular short story compilation series in the uh, 1980s. Thieves' World, well, the idea was, what if a bunch of really popular authors shared the same universe and the same characters, and they wrote stories about all those shared characters, and um, those characters, there were no rules other than you could not kill off someone else's character. So each each author got to come up with an interesting character, and they got to place them in this town called Sanctuary, which is also known as the Thieves' World, and they got to just sort of write their stories, and they wrote them to the tune of all these books. And the thing is, is you could do anything you wanted to anybody else's character, you just couldn't kill them. But you could do some nasty crap to the other which may meant that a lot of times these authors would see what other writers had done to their characters and then they're like well my character now has to exact his revenge on that guy's character oh it just became delicious beautiful grim fun in fact these books are probably the um grandfather of grimdark now let's talk about this book in particular tales from the vulgar unicorn Volume 2 of Thieves' World. It's got a great um, character list here in the front, and we're going to talk about that. It's got a great map of the areas uh, the, in the city. There's also a map of the city. And uh, the anyway, one of the things is, is uh, when I was thinking for, as a kid, as I was contemplating writing my own fantasy novels, I loved the characters in Thieves' World. And there's three characters, four characters, three characters plus a saloon in my books that took their inspiration directly from Thieves' World. The first one was the Vulgar Unicorn. I thought that was a great name for a saloon. In my world, I wanted there to be a saloon, but I couldn't call it the Vulgar Unicorn. I came up with a much less... Um, you know, the, the name that I came up with just wasn't as good as the Vulgar Unicorn. I came up with the Filthy Horse Saloon. Filthy Horse Saloon. Now, 
For those of you who have uh, listened to my books on Audible, when the Audible narrator talks about the Filthy Horse Saloon, it sounds like he's saying Filthy Horror Saloon. So the Filthy Horror Saloon. So I get readers come up to me all the time, I love the Filthy Horror Saloon. I love the Filthy Horror Saloon. I'm like, there's no Filthy Horror Saloon in... It would have been a better name than the Filthy Horse Saloon, I'll tell you that. So, the, you know, but I took that from the Vulgar Unicorn. Another thing is, is there's a character in here named Cap'n Vera. The minstrel Cap'n Vera is one of the Thieves World characters. I based my character Culpabara after Cap'n Vera. Also, Hans Shadowspawn, the most famous thief in all of fantasy literature, Hans Shadowspawn. Um... In honor of Hans Shadowspawn, I named one of the characters in The Blackest Heart, Hans Rake. There's one more, Jubal. Jubal, the ex-gladiator, I named one of the characters in The Forgetting Moon, Jubal Bruck, after the gladiator in this. Let's get to the book itself. It's got... um. About eight stories told by about eight different uh, very famous fantasy authors at the time. Those authors were uh, Robert Asprin, of course, who did the editing. Lynn Abbey, David Drake, Philip Jose Farmer, Ivan Vaught, Janet Morris, and Andrew J. Offit. Um, we'll go through each story one at a time. Uh, the first story in the book, I'll be honest, the first four stories in this book didn't really grab me. I, I remember reading these over and over as a kid and loving them, but reading them again as an adult, I'll be honest, the first four stories in this book, I was kind of struggling through. And then the last three, we'll talk about the last three, though, that really make this book sing. Spiders of the Purple Mage is, book no, is, is story number one by Philip Jose Farmer. Spiders of the Purple Mage, clearly an homage to Riders of the Purple Sage by... Zane Grey, The Great Western, which I've also reviewed on this channel. But Spiders of the Purple Mage is a story about rats, a rat that swallowed a gem, and then a cat that swallowed the rat, and then a dog that swallowed the cat. And now we have a big dog hunt in Sanctuary to find the gem. And we go into some caves and caverns, and there's some magic spiders, thus the Spiders of the Purple Mage. It's kind of a cool story. Then we move to the second story, which is called Goddess by David Drake. It's about Samlor and his dagger and um, just things like that. I mean, not, not a very mem memorable story, although David Drake did go on to write a lot of great fantasy and science fiction. This, he wrote these, the, he, he joined the Thieves World cast at a pretty young age. Story number the three, the, the Fruit of... Elnabar by Lynn Abbey. This is about the blacksmith Dubro and his wife Illyria, and who is a seeress, by the way, and, uh, and 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 sort of a mysterious story about a young boy named Wallagrin that they met a long time ago, and what happens in the past and how it affects their future when they meet that same young boy as an adult. Story number four: The Dream of the Sorceress by Ivan Vaught. It's about Stolwig, a character that we never really ever see again in the Thieves World series. However, he does interact with a lot of the other famous characters like Cap and Vera, One Thumb, Enos Yorl, Quag, Quag, the the um the Hellhound Quag, and it's got a, it's about hidden identities. Now we get into the final three stories where this book really hits its stride, and we start to deal with characters that become iconic in the Thieves' World universe. Not only that, but in the 1980s, they were iconic in the fantasy fan universe. Story number five is called Vashenka's Minion by Janet Morris, and it introduces us to the mercenary Tempus. Now, Tempus is, rec is represented on the cover of this book, fighting all these hawk-faced guys um, now, the hawk-faced guys are sort of the minions of Jubal, the gladiator. So Tempus is a mercenary. He becomes one of the stars of the rest of the Thieves' World universe. In fact, several of the standalone novels were dedicated just to the adventures of Tempus, the mercenary. He's just a badass dude. But in this book, he hires the um, thief Shadow Spawn to do a few things. He um, wants to te teach the gladiator Jubal some lessons. Um, it's just a great story. 
Um, and then book six is actually called Shadow's Pawn, and it's about Hans Shadowspawn, and it's written by uh, Andrew J. Offit. And this is about Shadowspawn is the most famous thief in the history of fantasy. I loved all of the stories about Shadowspawn that were in all of the Thieves' World novels. He's just a clever thief, a dangerous thief slash assassin. He's just the most badass character in the Thieves' World universe. And here he's kind of also helping Tempest the Mercenary um, kill some of Jubal, Jubal's um, Hawk Mask warriors. And then book er, story seven, The Guard, To Guard the Guardians by Robert Asprin himself was is about the hellhounds the hawk the hellhounds well the hellhounds are the bodyguards of the prince catacac catacathus so there's a prince catacathus that runs sanctuary of the town and he's got these bodyguards called hellhounds which the bodyguards the hellhound bodyguards are also some of my favorite characters and they are in all these books too and they are some badasses in their own right but anyway i absolutely adore the thieves world series one of these days i might just do a in-depth sort of overview of all of everything combined and and we'll just go over all that but anyway tales from the vulgar unicorn the last three books the stories in the series 10 out of 10 the first four maybe like six out of tens those ones so we'll give this a, we'll make split the difference and just say eight out of ten for tales of the Vul from the vulgar unicorn thieves world number two awesome